Hello, my name is Mark and I am Gico Cheetah. I'm here with Practical Machines today to talk about the different axes available to us on the CNC machine and how they all work. Okay, so here's a graphical representation of the axes that I'm going to talk about during this video. Now, you might find if you have a 12 axis machine, you might have more axes than this. So we're just talking about the X, Y, and Z and the different relationships to different axes from those. So as you can see, our X axis relates to U, A, and I, and so on with our Y and our Z there. So let's have a look at each one of those and how they all work. So let's start off by looking at the X, Y, and Z axes. We need to have a good understanding of these before we can talk about the others. So this diagram here is of a milling machine, I believe a bridge port by the look of it. And we can see that our Z axis plus takes our spindle away from the table, where Z minus goes into the table or into the work. Our Y plus generally takes our table away from us if we're dealing with a vertical machine. And X minus is to the left, X minus X plus to the right. So that's just a basic standard vertical machine, milling machine that the axes uh, represent there. Now, if we move on to a lathe here, we can see it gets a little bit more simple. We've only got two axes on a basic lathe, but lathes and machine and centers, um, mill turns can go up to a ridiculous amount of axes. So this is just the basic ones of a two axes lathe. And we can see here that Z minus goes into the spindle and Z plus takes our tool away from the spindle. Y X minus takes a cut and X plus takes our tool up out of the way of the material. So that's the basic axes on a lathe. Now you might find the Y axis on some lathes which push the turret towards the viewer here on this uh, slide. And the back, it's great for milling, um, flats, uh, things like that very quickly. We can program G-code very quickly to machine flats on um, a bolt with a Y axis there. Okay, so that's our X, Y, Z. Now let's move on to UVW, the next uh, axes in our list here. So these, we call them axes, but they're actually incremental movements of those particular axes. And we would gen generally use it mostly with uh, turning, but it can be used in milling. So what these are, these are incremental movements of those axes. So it doesn't take our program from absolute, so it doesn't use our dating position. It uses the last known position of the tool, and then moves it a set amount. So let me give you an example there. So if we take, for example, a rapid move on a CNC lathe, we've got our G00 there, our rapid travel command. Our U is our X. So what we're doing is we're moving plus in X five millimeters, and our W there is Z. So we're moving 10 millimeters to the left or towards the chuck if we're on a lathe, um, by 10 millimeters from the last known position of the tool. So on a CNC milling machine, we've got an extra axis there, we've taken that we're using a three axis mill, and it would look a little bit like this on a milling machine. So we've got a rapid travel command there, G00. U moves 25 millimeters in X on the plus. V is 10 millimeters in V or Y on the plus. And then W is going down and taking a five millimeter cut there. And this is all from the last known position of the tool and not from the data position that we're programming from. So where would we use these? Well, um, on a lathe, we use them a lot for making cycles and macros, and they can be used on a milling machine for that also. Okay, so let's move on to our next ones. So our next ones are A, B, and C in relationship to X, Y, and Z there. So what are these axes used for? Well, A, B, and C, Generally, on a milling machine especially, they are rotational axes. So A rotates around X, B rotates around Y, and C rotates around Z. Now, this is not the case on lathes. They act a little bit differently here. So let's go into how they're different on mills and lathes as well. So on a CNC milling machine here, our A axis rotates around the X, uh, our B axis rotates around the Y, and if we got a five axis head, um, it would control that maybe, depending on the machine. On a horizontal mill, the B axis tends to be the rotary table that we might put a pallets on, etc., to rotate our billets. So the B axis on a milling machine controls the rotation around the Y axis there. Um, and the C axis rotation is around the Z axis. So like a, a turntable, like a, the table would spin, then that would be the Z axis there. So these are a lot different on a CNC lathe. Now on a CNC lathe, the C axis controls the rotation of the spindle. So if we're milling, we can have to set the spindle at zero degrees, move a flap, move the spindle to 180 degrees, 
millimolar flat. So the C axis controls that part of the lathe there. So we can position control that spindle. Great for when we're doing live tooling work. Now the B axis, quite often on a lathe, is the subspindle moving along the Z axis. Now, I know it doesn't make sense because Z, B, Y, etc. But that's the way it works. So B axis on a lathe, we're bringing a subspindle to um, do a transfer to pick the part up from one spindle to another, parting off, positioning, etc. So B axis generally controls the Z axis movement of the subspindle. And then we got A axis, now that rotates around the X axis. Um, again, that's another radial axis. So lathes and milling machines are slightly different and vertical and horizontal machines are slightly different depending where that Z axis is. So we know the orientation of the axes are there. And then the big 12 axes CNC machine and sensors may throw all of this out the window. But generally these are the axes it sticks to, but you might find your machine might not stick to these rules. Well, now finally we have our I, J and K. Now, these are not official axes. These are center points of circles and radiuses, but they're still kind of classes and axes. So I've mentioned it here because the I does involve the X axis, J is the Y and K there is the Z axis. So how does this work? Okay, so let's assume we're cutting a radius using G-code on a CNC milling machine. And we've taken our tool up to the start point of the rad there, we can see from this drawing. And we've got a 10 mil rad. So what we would do is we would define that center point using I and J from that tool. Now these are generally incremental axes as well. So these generally take the last known tool position as zero. So if we're designating the center point of this radius here, we would say X10, Y10, which is the last point of the radius. That's where we want our tool to finish up. And then we use I to tell the cutter that 10 millimeters to the right of it right now is the center point of the radius. And with J zero there, it's saying it's in line on the Y axis, it's level with the tool. So we would issue zero for that. Now that would cut that uh, clockwise axis, that GO2 there, using that as a center point, and it would finish on the X and Y positions that we give it. So we would always assume I, J and K are incremental unless otherwise specified. It's very easy to change this in the program. So even if your machine generally does this, a previous operator may have changed it in the program. We can also change this for parameters, but we generally assume that these are incremental unless otherwise stated. But be careful with that, just in case they're not. So to use I, J and K, we generally have to tell the machine what plane we are working in for this to work. And we would do that by G17, G18, and G19. As we can see on this diagram here, we can see which planes select which with those G codes. So this is also relevant on Miller machines as well. Okay, so that's a very quick overview of the different axes and their, and their purposes. Now, remember with all things machining, everything's not set in stone. Some machine manufacturers might throw all this out the window and change the theory totally. It depends on the machine manufacturers, the machines need, etc. But this is generally what we can expect when we talk about those axes. So if you want to know more from me, I have a Instagram account over on GCO Tutor, and I have a website full of information, courses, and videos over at gcodetutor.com. So if you want to know more, come find me on either of those.